Guess who? That's right. I'm still alive and I'm back. It only took me, how long's it been? Three months? Oh, that's a bit. Uh, but the important thing is that I'm back now and I haven't just been watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine for the past few months. I finished that, so I also did some coding. All right, I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but here is a really quick recap of what I've been doing. So I finished my AI Learns to Walk Simulator thing and the plan was to chuck that on my website, but over to my website and you can see the problem is it looks remarkably like a piece of shit. So I need to fix that. While doing that, I wanted to change my landing page, which is currently like a bunch of dots which form words and stuff, which is great. However, it still says thanks for 300,000 subs, which is a problem. Hey, yeah, I have a question. Uh, can't you just change the pictures? So as I was saying, there's really no way I could continue with this landing page. So I wanted to replace it with, bam, you guessed it, an AI wish play snake. Woo! Recap done. And boom, there we go. There's the thought process getting me from a creature creating evolution simulator to Snake. Okay, we caught up. Fantastic. All right. Sorry, that was a bit of an unusual intro. Uh, so Snake, we're doing Snake. Evan, you've already done like two videos on Snake already. What are you f***ing out of ideas? Oh, you f*** off. I've got plenty of ideas. I've got a whole page of ideas. See, there's no need to worry. No, the reason I'm doing Snake again is because they are the first two videos on my channel. So that's really where everything started. So I thought it'd be kind of a cute idea to have the Snake be a central thing on my website. But not just any old snake AI will be good enough. He will be the god of snake world and he will be beautiful. He will be perfect. So, well, yeah, there you go. That's the goal for this video slash future videos if this one doesn't go super well. But before we get excited, the first step is to create the game. So let's make that snake. Okay, so first we're gonna need to make the snake. Uh, and that's done. Then we're gonna need to add the apple. Yep, there we go, and we're done. Wow, okay. Uh, that usually takes longer. That's usually like half my video. I guess Snake is an easy fucking game to make. Now to the fun part. Let's AI that bitch. In my first video, I used a basic neural network and sprinkled on some evolution to get some intelligent behavior happening. That resulted in this guy, which is not bad, but a lot has changed and I think I can do a lot better. So the algorithm I'm gonna be implementing is called Q-Learning. Since I've explained Q-Learning at least 400 times, I'll give you the abridged version in the form of a sock puppet show. <clears throat> oh, hello, Mr. AI. Hello, Mr. Bullet. You have been a very good boy. I will give you a cookie for doing things that I want you to do. Oh, thank you, Mr. Bullet. I will take this cookie and learn from this experience. Okay, so now that you have a complete and detailed understanding of what Q-learning is, let's start coding. The plan is to get the AI moving and stuff, but first we're gonna have to define how the AI can see. In my previous video, I'll let the AI see in eight directions out of its face. However, this really isn't enough information for the AI to be able to get the perfect score, so I decided I would simply try to give it the entire screen of pixels. So it would basically see exactly the same way we do. However, there is a problem here. To explain this, put yourself in the AI's shoes for a bit. Okay, so I'll give you this frame. Now, tell me which direction the snake should go. It should go right. Congratulations. Congratulations, you did it. Here's your medal. Have a read. It says you're stupid. <laughs> you just died because this was actually the head of the snake and you just moved into the body. All right, so you see the problem. It's easy to tell what's going on if you can see it moving. However, the AI doesn't have any sort of memory. So all it knows is where the snake is now. We're gonna need to fix the inputs. So any ideas? Yes, you in the back with the incredibly handsome face. Uh, yeah, can you give the AI some memory? Yeah, I suppose I could. That way it could remember the previous position of the snake and based on the changes, it could figure out where the head is. Yeah, that would be great. However, I don't know how to fucking do that. And I'm already three months behind on this video. So it's not a great time to be learning new shit. Any more suggestions? Oh uh, yeah, why don't you give the snake two sets of pixels, one which is the previous position of the snake and one which is the current position. That way it doesn't need memory because it always knows where it was previously. Ooh, now we're talking. This is called frame stacking and is how our AI is gonna be able to see movement. However, guess what? We've got a new problem. The plan is to feed in two frames of the screen to the AI. One which was the previous frame and one which is the current frame. If the map is a 40 by 40 grid, then we are feeding the AI 3,200 inputs every frame. With this many inputs, the AI is really gonna struggle because, well, let, let me just show you. This is after 24 hours of learning. I guess it's not dying, but we've got a long way to go before we get the perfect snake AI. So the problem is that we're giving it way too many inputs. If we could get it down to say 400 pixels, then that would be fine. Any more suggestions? What if we shrink the map so we don't have as many pixels? Get the fuck out of my class. Sorry, what was that? I said get out! What a fucking loser. So this is the obvious answer, to shrink the map. So instead of there being 40 by 40 pixels, it's 30 by 30 or 20 by 20. However, there is something wrong with this. What is it? Can't put my finger- It's for fucking pussies! And Coat Ball ain't a pussy, what? 
Any more ideas? I've got an idea. Well, it's probably shit. So shut the fuck up and let Papa Bullet handle this. Aw. Okay, so next plan. And I know we've gone through a lot of plans, but trust me, we're getting close. Let's shrink what the player can see instead of the map itself. Okay, if we center the visible pixels around the head of the snake, while we have removed visibility to a large portion of the screen, we will be able to see the most important stuff. Not only that, but the whole problem of identifying the head of the snake is fucked off. This should be fairly obvious, but I'm going to explain it anyway. So let's play Find That Head. Where's the head? It's in the middle. Okay, what about now? It's in the middle. Are you seeing a pattern yet? You probably should be. If you can't, I would suggest going and seeing a doctor. You're probably dying. Oh, actually, no, first, finish watching this video, then you have my permission to doctor. So now that we know where the head is, we can actually get rid of the whole second layer of pixels thing, because that was kind of the whole purpose of it. Okay, so we're gonna put a 20 by 20 vision square around the head of the snake. This will give us a total of 400 pixels, which is still a lot, but it's like eight times smaller than what we had. So it will do. So at the start of this video, I mightn't have given you the best possible explanation of how Q-learning works. Like some people might, still be a little confused. I don't know how. I think I did a pretty good job, but for those who don't understand still, let me explain. So what I did say is that we will reward and punish AIs whenever they do something good or bad. From these experiences, the AI will learn what we want it to do and what we don't want it to do. In this case, we will punish it whenever it dies and reward it whenever it gets food. All right, useful explanation over. Let's AI that bitch. So at the start, the AI doesn't know shit, so all it can do is move around randomly and accumulate experiences. After playing 20 games, the AI has been punished enough for hitting the walls that it's realized that it's probably not the best strategy, so it starts to avoid them. This is great. However, it's still completely ignoring the apples, so it's not exactly the most thrilling gameplay, but whatever, it's a start. After training for another 100 games, the AI has figured out that apples are the shit and have found a brand new purpose in life. He tried to convince his friends, but that didn't go down super well. However, it's kind of shit at navigating towards the apple and only tries to eat it if it happens to be very close to the apple. L let me show you what I mean. Uh, no, no, nope, no, 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 oh, no. Hey, there we go. All right, so the training was kind of slow from here on, so I left the train for a while, and here are the results after playing a total of 1,000 games. The snake starts close to the food, so it grabs a quick feed. However, then there's no apples within its vision square, so it begins to search. Its searching strategy is interesting. It seems to forget what game it's in and start playing a weird game of Pong. This seems at first to be a fucking terrible way of searching the environment, and it kind of is, but to its credit, it eventually stumbles into the food, even though it was in the corner. Once it gets a bit bigger, ugh, I'm, I'm really having a hard time explaining what it's thinking. It seems to be moving around randomly until it sees the apple, which I feel is a pretty inefficient way of doing things, but it seems to be working, so what the fuck do I know? Maybe it's using an ingenious strategy that no mere mortal can understand is dead. So while that was kind of promising, it's still not fantastic. Like if you saw a person playing like this, you'd either call a doctor or an exorcist. So I let it play for another 1,000 games, and hopefully it will calm the fuck down. So after 2,000 games, here be the sneaky boy. Oh, okay, good start. Right off the bat, the searching strategy seems to be vastly superior to the random pong movements, but Let's see how it goes. It still, however, struggles when the snake gets too long and it gets trapped. Okay, so little is good, more must be better. Let's train the snake for another 3,000 games. Although, since the game's getting longer, this is beginning to take a while. Like, 300 games equates to about four hours of training, but I'll do it just for you. I mean, I guess it's really not that difficult from my end. I just had a nap, but Snakey Boy here is working hard. Let's check in on Adrian, which is what I've named him because I need more friends. So, a total of 5,000 games of snake should have Adrian performing very well. So, let's see how he's doing. Oh! Okay. Adrian, what the fuck? Get your shit together, mate. And we're off. There we go. Adrian just needed some words of encouragement. Okay, once it starts moving, it seems to be a fan of the old clockwise spin move, which appears to be working pretty well. And I guess it's a good way of keeping the body out of its way. Oh no, oh no, Adrian, buddy, what are you doing? <laughs> I think I found a small flaw in this strategy. 
Okay, so to be honest, I don't think Adrian's exactly getting better, but let's give him the benefit of the doubt and let's train him for fucking ages. So I trained him for another 20,000 games, which if he was going to get better, he'd have plenty of time to do so. So here is Adrian 2.0, new and improved. Adrian, no, <laughs> why? Okay, we're going, we're going, at least. <laughs> there we go, we're back on the Pong strategy, apparently. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was objectively worse, but you do you, Adrian. F okay, here we go again. Get comfortable, people. We're gonna be here for a while. Oh, he's seen it, yes. Okay, now we're talking. Okay, now that he's found the food, it looks like he's going pretty well. Damn it, Adrian. I trusted you. You were the chosen one. Fuck. Okay, so I think we all need to settle down and just accept Adrian for the failure he was. I could probably do some more changes to the AI, such as giving it the direction to the apple or increasing the size of the neural network, but instead I'm going to do something that I probably should do more often. Bit of cheeky research. Let's see how well other people have done at playing Snake using Q-learning. I don't usually do this because I enjoy the process of problem solving, not the process of googling shit, however I will concede this battle. From my research I learned two things. First of all, people f***ing suck at goading Snake. Like look at this shit. Oh, it makes me f***ing angry. Look, the snake doesn't align with the apple, god f***ing damn it. There are no words for how angry this makes me. It probably shouldn't piss me off this much, but how does that even happen? Like, I feel like it would be more difficult than just having them line up. Snake is like the easiest game to make ever. This guy did it in 4 minutes and 30 seconds, and look, he must be some sort of f***ing wizard, because the blocks align. The second thing that I learned is that no one has been able to use Q-learning to create an AI which gets anywhere close to beating the game. Like, don't give Adrian too much shit for being a dud, he, he did alright. A lot of solutions gave the AI a drastically simplified view of the game. For example, the snake might only be able to see one pixel ahead in each direction. The advantage of this simplicity is that the learning can happen a lot faster, however there's just no way the snake could finish the game with this little information. And so I thought I'd give this a go myself, and this is the results I got from giving it a much simplified view of the world. This is actually using the same inputs I used in my very first video, uh, and it does perform a bit better, but there's no way it could win like this. So f***. Uh, this is not good news. Uh, if no one else can get even close to finishing it with Q-learning, then I got f*** all chance of doing it myself. But I'm as stubborn as I am lazy, so when I said I'd make the perfect AI, I meant it! I meant it! So while, yes, this is probably not the best news ever, it's also an opportunity to make another video! That's right, we're milking Snake for a total of four videos, baby. Yeah! So yeah, I probably didn't do the best job explaining the whole Q-learning thing, but if you want a good introduction to reinforcement learning algorithms, then you should check out Brilliant.org's new reinforcement learning quiz. For people who don't know, Brilliant.org is a problem-solving website and app with a hands-on approach, providing over 50 interactive courses containing storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges, and problems to solve. It's been a while since my last video, so in that time, Brilliant has brought out a bunch of new courses, which they would like me to share with you guys. One of my favorite is Computer Science Essentials. This massive course is a fantastic introduction to the fundamentals of programming, which is what makes everything I do here possible. It's designed for anyone learning computer science for the first time, but it's also really useful for programmers looking to deepen their understanding of algorithms and core computer science concepts. You don't need to know how to code or anything, it's truly beginner friendly. You'll be introduced to some very important algorithms, and also learn how to design ones yourself. So if you want to support the channel and have access to all of Brilliant.org's courses, head over to Brilliant.org slash CodeBullet for 20% off their annual premium subscription. Oh, well, thanks for watching, guys. Sorry that took me so long. That's, I mean, I did have the excuse at the start, but it's mostly my bad. Uh, uni was being a bitch, but uni's always a bitch, so that's hardly an excuse. Um, I am actually almost finished coding the next video, the next snake video, so that will probably come out soonish. That definitely won't be three months. You can bank on that. That's actually, like, that, I, there's no way it could take me three months. Surely. I'm thinking a couple of weeks. Max, like it's it's pretty much done. I just have to, I just have to do the editing and speak and shit. Um, and then I've also already finished coding the um the AI learns to walk shit. Uh, so that'll that'll be out soonish as well. And then after that, I'll do like 
brand new shit. I don't know. I, I don't know where I'll go from there. But that is the plan. So yeah, um, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Adios. Thank you.